If you like to make your NFL games a little bit more interesting, you've come to the right place. It's the Even Money Podcast with Ross Tucker and Steve Fezzik. Yeah, Vegas, baby, Vegas. It is the Even Money Podcast. We are presented, of course, by DraftKings. Love those dudes. Love playing best ball on the DraftKings app. Love, of course, placing wagers on the DK Sportsbook app. You guys know the deal. Use the code ROSS when you're over there. You can check me out on social media at Ross Tucker NFL. Check us out at Ross Tucker Pod. Blown away by how awesome Manti Teo was on yesterday's Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Really would encourage you guys, if you get a chance, to listen to Manti go over his documentary, the impact it had on him and other people, the impact that the catfishing incident had on him as a player. It's really a fascinating conversation. Seems like an awesome dude. I met him for the first time this offseason. Really, really enjoyed uh, the conversation with Manti Teo yesterday. Always love the conversation on this show. Always love, by the way, giving out best ball entries on the Fantasy Feast podcast. Make sure you're taking advantage of any of the sponsors you see at RossTucker.com or rating review the show and send that to me, Ross at RossTucker.com because we're giving out the rest of the best ball entries on tomorrow's Fantasy Feast podcast, which will be epic. This is the Even Money Betting Podcast. It's a top five NFL betting podcast in the world. Might be number one, for all I know, uh, based on downloads and based on the response we get. People love it. Here's what we got today. I got to ask Steve about the hot dog eating contest because every other year he's placed a wager on it. So what's the deal now with no Joey Chestnut and how? what will we do there? The NBA futures are changing quickly. With all these moves in free agency, is there an opportunity there? We will continue with Steve's NFL games of the year. He has a couple for week six and seven. This has been awesome getting his games of the year in advance for certain weeks on the NFL slate. We've never done this before. This will be something we do annually now. And then maybe some email questions and maybe even some questions I have for Steve as well. But let's start with this, Steve. And when I talk about Steve, of course I'm talking about the one and only Steve Fezzik at Fezzik Sports, the only two-time winner of the Super Bowl of professional football betting, the Super Contest at the Westgate. Although, you know what, Steve? We say that, but recently you were hyping up, you know, the contest at Circa. Is it fair to say that Circa is now the Super Bowl of professional football betting, the circuit contest, and not the Westgate? I don't want to take away from what you accomplished, but I think it's fair to like put it out there. Yeah, 100%. And let me use a poker as an example. So poker, the World Series of Poker, determines the world champion, and that's always been uh, pretty universal. It's never changed. And other um, properties have tried to get a foothold, and they do a a fine job, but the World Series of Poker has maintained that. What happened is that the Westgate here in Las Vegas, formerly the Hilton, they were number one for years and years, and they still do a fine job, and they still have that same contest. But the Circa, with that Circa swim downtown, and with all the promotions and the guarantee money that they're putting out, Ross, they're guaranteeing $16 million dollars. $10 $10 million in Survivor, $6 million in the um, Circa Millions contest, and that has just become the biggest, baddest, bestest um, sports betting tournament in the world. Wow. Uh, you did pretty well in that last year, right? Yeah, so I took home, I think it was $440,000 um, cashed in Circa Survivor as an investor, finished 21st in Circa Millions, so um, brought my lifetime Career winnings to $1.5 million. Now, be a little careful about these career winnings because in po- poker players say, might have $1.5 million in career winnings, and they could be a loser, a net loser, because there's like 80 different events during the World Series of Poker. You could literally spend a million dollars in tournament entry fees 
it's not really that case in sports betting. I mean, there are years where I, I've invested less than $10,000 in sports betting contests. Um, now that they've expanded and there's more of them than at Circa and more entries allowed, I'm going to be investing more than that per year. But even 10 years ago, I would say my average annual outlay was under $10,000. Wow. Okay. Just so I know for clarity, the 400 grand you made, was that in the Circa Survivor or was that in the Circa Millions? Yeah. So Circa Millions was 24,000. Circa Survivor was 400,000 and some change. Wow. And what's, and the guarantee for each is what this year? So 6 million for Circa Millions, um, total prize money and first place winner will get 1 million. But get this, Ross, Circus Survivor, $10 million guaranteed. If you're the sole survivor, and it's very unlikely, but it could happen if there's a lot of very big upsets, $10 million, you'll be getting a paycheck if you're the sole survivor that is right there with the biggest prize money in any sport. Wow. That's awesome. That's exciting. Love it. Check him out at Fezzik Sports. What about the contest that's this week, Steve? The Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. A lot of controversy because Joey Chestnut's not participating. I think I saw maybe where he's going to be like at some army base or military base doing it um, with with some soldiers. I, I don't know what's going Ooh. on there. But it, it's, it's a long, complicated story that I don't think people on Even Money podcasts really care about. What they do care about is betting and making money. And so previously, correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, you basically would just bet the over on Joey Chestnut's hot dogs every year because yeah, every year he would like break a new record somehow. I don't know how he did that every year, but every year he would break a new record so your bet in previous years, correct me if I'm wrong, was basically just typically the over on Joey Chestnut's hot dogs. Well, it was a weather handicap. Specifically, if the temperature was like above 90 degrees, I'm not a human consumption expert, but um, apparently when the temperature spiked to 90 degrees, it becomes very difficult to set personal bests in eating contests such that if the temperature was really hot and muggy, I would bet under, otherwise I'd bet over. And Chestnut was eating like 86 dogs. The number two guy was hitting like mid fifties. And so because of that, there was no drama. It was almost like the Olympics are coming up. Ross, I don't know if you remember, they used to be in the seventies. There was this big Russian Alexei something, and he could lift more than everyone else. And you knew he was going to win Edwin Moses and the 400 meters. He was going to win. It was, there was no drama here. Now this year there'll be drama. So I am looking forward to seeing and handicapping some of these guys I never even looked at in prior years. You know, on some level, Steve, it does make the hot dog eating contest a little bit more interesting. Like, I guess I'm curious to see. I mean, I know we all watched it and Joey Chestnut, but this might be competitive this year. It might be more competitive than just how many hot dogs does Joey eat. Now it's like, who's going to win? I've told the story before. I think her name is Sonia. Um, but I saw this woman win the, she's like 115 pounds. Saw her win the, the, the wing eating contest in Buffalo twice. And it was crazy impressive. She ate like 12 pounds of wings in 10 minutes. And at the end, like had a napkin and just like went like that with her lips. I was like, what is, what is happening right now? How did she just do that? Hey, it, was like, it, was like, it was like 10% of her body weight. This dog eating stuff is way underrated. And Kobayashi, former champion, is, he's the guy that invented you know, dunking the buns. So he was a, an industry changer. He's not nearly as good as Chestnut, so Chestnut will crush him. But in September, they're going to have an eat off on Netflix. It is going to be multi millions dollars pay per view. It's going to be enormous. Um, I saw Paige Sporanic eat six hot dogs like in 10 minutes. Uh, I got to tell you, hot dog eating. We are just seeing the very, the, the very tip of the iceberg and what's possible. Wow, that's interesting. Um, I had the one time, Steve, it's funny because one of my fraternity brothers listens to the show, so he'll remember this, but it was called Task Night for my fraternity in college, and I had to eat 16 
raw hot dogs. So now keep this in mind. They're raw, but they're all hot dogs are cooked. It's just whether or not they weren't heated. So it was just like they had been pre-cooked. It was just like eating bologna, basically. Mm -hmm. But let me just tell you, hot dogs are much, much better when they're warm. They're also smaller when they're warm. And they're much better with a bun or with any type of condiment. I was just, pardon the expression, raw dogging them. And I actually thought, I can do this. I was a big college lineman at the time. I ate eight of them, no problem. Those second eight, that that's a lot, man. That that is that that was very, very rough. At least I wasn't like my buddy who had they gave him a whole thing of Hawaiian punch and two sticks of butter and he had to eat it like it was fun dip. <laughs> Nice. Sticking the butter in the fun dip, in the Hawaiian punch. Oh, man, that was rough. Those were the days, Steve. Those were the days. All right, speaking of the days, these might be the days for my Sixers. I'm, like, so excited right now. People, after the season, were like, ah, oh, trade Embiid. Start the rebuild process. Evidently not. In a second, Steve, I want to get your thoughts on where the Sixers are at. But first, we're two days away from 4th of July. You know what that means? That means grilling meat. Summer is heating up, and so are the deals at Omaha Steaks. Perfectly aged, oh-so-tender steaks, juicy burgers, so much more. Omaha Steaks is your summer grilling headquarters. Right now, you can shop exclusive packages starting at $99 during the Hotter Than Fire sale at omahasteaks.com. Plus, get an extra $10 off when you use promo code EVEN at checkout. Love me some Omaha Steaks. Love me 4th of July. Every purchase is backed by their unconditional money-back guarantee. Simply go to omahasteaks.com and shop the Hotter Than Fire sale today before these deals go up in smoke. Promo code EVEN. Steve, as you know, you got to have something to wash it down. It's Labatt Blue Light. Nothing is more American on 4th of July than drinking Labatt Blue Light from Canada with our friends and living life to the power of we. It's interesting because you think of it as a Canadian beer, but it's made in Buffalo, New York. It's delicious beer. Labatt USA. Always enjoy responsibly. And... The Buffalo Bills wear red, white, and blue. Just like the United States, Labatt USA. Awesome. All right, so Steve, here's where we're at. Sixers got Paul George. I'm very happy about that. Sixers re-signed some other guys. We got Eddie Drummond. We got Maxi to extension. The Sixers NBA futures are changing dramatically. Are we doing anything about it? I'm not going to invest in it, but certainly the Sixers' chances of winning the title have gone up by about 33%. They were 12 to 1. Now they are 8 to 1 to win it all. And I think it's good for the NBA. The NBA had a problem, Ross, and the problem was lack of parity between the conferences. Um, specifically, this, we were looking at the Celtics, and it was an embarrassment in the playoffs. The way. Every team they played was non-competitive. Now, I know their opponents got injured, but there was no drama. We knew the Celtics were going to win each and every round. They're like minus 900 every round to advance. So, good news to have not just Milwaukee, but now we got um, Philly as a legit contender, at least. So, unlike Joey Chestnut against everyone else, hey, maybe, maybe Philly can eat enough hot dogs to be competitive this year in the East. So 33% just because of the 12 to 1 to the 8 to 1. Yes. What I, I, I got to look again and see where the Celtics are at there. Do you, um, on these like free agent moves, Steve, are there people, are there pros like you that are like kind of standing by for these Woj bombs or news from Shams and looking to fire on futures as that information comes down or not really? 
Yeah, yes, there are. They make fun of me. Um, the Brad Feinbergs, the hitmans of the world, these are buddies of mine. And they'll say, Fez, how do you not get a piece of Philly? You know, at, at, I got 14 to 1 and, and, and the like. And so every year, my, you know, my friend Brad, he pass posts me. He tells me like a month later. My friend Hitman tells me like a day later. <laughs> so um, it's pretty funny. But no, they just follow all the, um, the beat writers and they get the news. So like Dak Prescott, news is that he's not 100% and they've been betting against the Cowboys the last three days. What? Yeah, there's, there's rumors that he had an MRI. So that's uh, that's unconfirmed, but that's the rumors that I'm hearing. And money's been coming against the Cowboys. Um, their season win number is now down to 10 with a little vig to the under. Wow, that's really interesting. Say that one more time, Steve. So your buddies are already doing that. Yes. I don't know where they got their information from. One of them tells me that Dak may not be 100%. Wow, that's interesting. Um. All right, speaking of NFL, let's get to that because I'm curious to get your NFL games of the year for weeks six and seven, which has been fun, us doing this. So let's get to uh, your first game, which is Indy on the money line, minus 125 at Tennessee. Why is week six India at Tennessee a play for you? And I got three of these plays. They all actually are week six. I like week six better than week seven. Uh, this one's a slam dunk to me. I see Indianapolis as the ultimate eight of clubs, the average team in the NFL. I think they should win eight or nine games. Anthony Richardson back. Um, no real strong feelings on their over under, but Tennessee, I see this as a rebuild. Without Vrabel, I see them as a six-win team. <clears throat> I know they're off a bye, which helps Tennessee. But Indy's not just better, but significantly better. I think they should be laying three points. So minus 125 on the money line. Very cheap. Love the draft. Kings lets me bet a money line. Indy is the play. Um, what, what's the math on minus 125? What's that mean <clears throat> in points? Um, it, a minus one twenty five should be like a minus two point favorite, and you could certainly, I believe, the the point spread was, it was, it may have been minus two and a half, may have been minus two, but I, I actually slightly prefer minus one twenty five to minus two. Okay, that's how the math works there. Yes. All right. Next up, you've got the Chargers at Denver. We documented last week. You really do not like Denver. You really do not think that the Denver Broncos are very good. And as a result, this is another game where you're betting against them. You're, you're going to lay the two points with the Chargers on the road in Denver. Yeah, what is going on here? Denver is arguably the worst team in the NFL. I think New England's worse, but Denver's second worst. And the Chargers, I mean, they're an average team. An average team should be laying three or more against the worst team in the NFL. And the Chargers are off a bye. So the scheduling spot is actually good for the Chargers. The valuation is good for the Chargers. No way. No way this line can stay the where it's at right now, Ross. Have to lay minus two on the L.A. Chargers. Um, you know, we might get to it later. But for all these positions you're taking, Steve... How often do you get out of them if things go a, a different way or if there's an injury or whatever, as this, or, or, or you end up being wrong? Like these are week six games. Do you just let them all go or are you monitoring this as events happen, preseason injuries, week ones, week two, and then doing you know whatever you can to get out of some of these? Ideally, I'm monitoring it. And I'm on top of each and every game. But remember, I'm not betting enough that a hedge is necessary. I'm only going to play back if I like the other side. But that would not be unusual that by the time week six goes around, that this line pops up at three everywhere and someone puts up a three and a half. And then, sure, 
then I'll take Denver plus three and a half if everyone else has three. So um, it's in the back of my mind. But I, I got to be honest, I've forgotten about bets before. I go in my safe deposit box. I'm like, oh, I forgot about these four bets. I mean, they're recorded on some spreadsheet somewhere, but I'm a busy guy, you know, and come October, it's the sports equinox, you know, college basketball is about to start. NBA is about to start. I mean, there's so much going on. Sometimes I just forget about them. Steve, you need to have, whether it's your son or something, you need to have like an intern that has a Google doc that's like checking out your portfolio once a week to remind you of where you're at. I'm accepting applications. <laughs> Uh, what about the the Steelers at the Raiders? You're taking the Steelers again? Steve, you have a problem. This is like your fourth or fifth bet on the Steelers in the first six weeks, and yet you said you bet your balls off on the under. I love the way you said you got a problem. Like It reminds me fast times at Ridgemont High when Mr. Han gets into it with Jeff Spicoli and rips up his card. You're ripping, you're ripping my card. Hey, bud, what's your problem? Um, hey, do you hear that surfer dude pulled a knife on Mr. Hand the other day? No, no, he just called him a dick. Um, bottom line is the Steelers, I played under, big, under eight and a half because of how difficult their schedule is. But I'm worried that the Steelers are going to start out like five and three uh, because their schedule is favorable. And the Steelers are an average team. I tell you who isn't an average team the Las Vegas Raiders and uh, the Raiders. They're going to win six games, maybe seven. They're not as good as the Steelers. There's going to be lots of Steeler fans in Las Vegas. <clears throat> Give me Pittsburgh minus minus one fifteen. Got it. Like it. I also like when you can answer questions from our listeners, Steve, I, I you know, this is one of my favorite things. Number one, because it means our listeners either took advantage of one of our sponsors that you hear on the show or you see on the sponsors tab at RossTucker.com, or they just rated and reviewed the show on Apple Podcasts and sent it to me, Ross at RossTucker.com. This one comes from Rusty Shackelford, which is kind of an awesome name. Might be made up, but kind of an awesome name. Hi, Ross. Great work. I love the show. Question for Steve. How do you quantify the difference between a bet with lower total but juiced VIG or a bet with higher total but lower VIG? For example, LeBron James over 30 and a half points minus 140. LeBron James over 31 and a half points minus 110. If my play is over on LeBron James points, which should I choose? And Rusty rated and reviewed the show with a five-star rating. Appreciate that, Rusty. That's Rusty Shackelford, am I correct? That's right. The, what the, you know? Correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's the dude that got stranded in the Antarctic and like spent like two winters stuck there. And like trans navigated like Elephant Island, or they're stranded on an Elephant Island, and then he got, went to some other island and like climbed a mountain to save his people uh, at a whaling station. So definitely read about that. It's one of the greatest um, survival stories of all time. To answer the question, it all depends. I um, I would send them over to my friends at Unabated. Unabated is a site that prices all of this stuff, and they will tell you exactly how many cents it's worth to get an extra point when you're betting a player points or a player points, rebounds, assists. They've done all the math on that, and they'll tell you to the nearest cent how much it's worth. Oh, okay. So it, that would be very helpful, Steve. So I, I mean, yeah. like, is there a place where you can go and just, like, ask these questions, like th these math questions that you're curious about? Or no, that seems like that would be a pretty good business. Like, Am I better off doing this or this? Like, like I just asked you, minus, what, what was it? Minus um, 125 for the Colts versus laying two. I don't know how to do that math, but you do. Yeah, and the folks at Unabated can do that for you. I know how to do it on stuff like I can do a, a basic money line conversion chart to a point spread in the NFL 
where I can say, okay, if if, if a team's a three point favorite, if you want to be, me to go ahead and convert that to a money line, I'd say, you know, okay, it should be minus one fifty eight plus one thirty eight. Um, but I don't know how to do it for all the different players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's too complicated. Awesome. Hey, next week, games eight and nine. Games of the year for weeks eight and nine. And Steve has some very interesting information I don't think you'd expect him to say about buying picks from people. Good luck, everybody. Hope you guys win some money. Thanks for tuning in to Even Money. Make sure to also check out the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, Fantasy Feast, and College Draft, all on the DraftKings Network, YouTube, or subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform.